Hi guys, my name is Borodante and welcome back to Overpaint, which means I'll go through my Patreon page and check out all the submissions you guys sent to me during the summer. Although some of the submissions are still even from March in here, this will be the first submission from Controna. And yeah, presumably this will be the last massive overpaint episode with like a whole lot of submissions. So I'll go through these six submissions, check out your guys' artwork, trying to give you some advice and maybe fixing something. And the first patient, Controna, has this sentimental and kind of romantic picture. Although, is that like cemetery as well? So, some bad happened, but also there is a glimpse of hope. I like it. Hey, bro. What's up? Thank you so much for your advice last month. You're welcome. I don't remember what the advice was and what was the last month before March. February, I suppose, but <laughs> I don't remember what, what artwork there was. This time I'm submitting a more zoomed out piece. I was aiming to give this forest graveyard a warm feeling. I have this common issue when working with backgrounds where I'm unable to keep rendering and detailing them after a certain point. I get stuck, basically. Maybe you could give me some advice on reaching a consistent level of detail across a piece like this. Thanks. Now, before I continue, a real quick word from this video sponsor, Wingfox. They're having this awesome new course called Fantasy Character Illustration, Nuwa the Mother Goddess. In this course, you're going through the full process of creation, this female fantasy character, starting from scratch, developing the idea, developing design using all kinds of references. So it's a full package. It involves a whole lot of work with different references, beautiful colors and beautiful composition. I really love the combination of colors and just the flow of details in here and the dynamics. Yeah, your tutor is Daniela Ivanova. She's a freelance illustrator living in Germany, and it's safe to say she specializes on creating illustrations with female fantasy characters. Yeah, really loving her work, beautiful designs, beautiful dynamics, just flows of details and colors and the perspectives and dynamic postures. I think this kind of stuff really stands out on Instagram or something like that, so that's really cool. I think where Daniela's art style and approach really shine is with just building the dynamic composition and the usage of references to really enrich the picture into something that doesn't look basic but actually looks like something worth exploring for a certain period of time when you see this picture. This course is available right now for two payments of $149 or you can go with a single full payment of $298. Now you get this huge 51% discount because the course only started coming out and the lessons come out pretty fast. Now on top of that, there's a 15% discount code you can find in the video description along with an affiliate link to the course. So if you're interested, make sure to check out the video description. Now back to the video. I'm gonna choose this kind of brush for this piece. Just because I feel like, you know, it's just soft enough to support the mood and all that. Now, if we go with uh, like the traditional way of creating digital paintings and all that, I would say the main thing that this piece would benefit from would be the consistent brushwork. So I can see how the leaves were made with uh, a certain brush that just, you know, creates copies of leaves. And they are of a very specific and different style from, you know, the way the tree trunk is painted. It's like very soft and uh, like non-dynamic kind of brush. And these leaves, I assume you didn't actually create this brush. And because of that, it, it has this very like flat vector kind of look, you know, with very dynamic kind of leaves, whether it makes sense or not in this particular case, you know, uh, this kind of like, it almost feels like it has strong perspective on it. And that would make sense if this leaf would be like of this size on the picture, like really close to us. But when it's far away, it shouldn't have such a dynamic look. But generally, it's more about this flat vector kind of style appearance of it. And it's not specifically because it's like a, you know, copy paste kind of brush. You could still use a brush that would create leaves, but I don't think uh, it, it doesn't have to be so flat, you know, and perfectly opaque. 
because that's not the way you painted everything else. Look at these very romantic grass patches all over the place, you know, and stuff like that. Like, overall, it's not the fuzziest picture in the world, obviously, like, it's kind of anime. But, yeah, these leaves, they really feel out of place. Not to mention that anime itself usually has, like, watercolor backgrounds. So, I'm gonna go all over the picture, somehow fixing the brushwork. That, that's a lot of work, so I, I'm not sure if I'll be able to do everything. But I'll try to work on the leaves and maybe some other areas that I feel that they sort of break the picture a little bit. Maybe exactly preventing you from detailing it further, because when everything is so separate, such sharp and perfect leaves, like, they kind of require more detail because they're super flat, but how do you add any detail on top of such sharp and flat leaves, right? So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something. I think I'll actually start with uh, blending everything together a little bit with media and filter. Uh, that's not some like necessarily uh, a good trick to work on your own piece, but since I'm painting over, I feel like this way, just getting rid of those super sharp shapes would already give me a better base to introduce more details upon. Also, the guy doesn't really need that, so I'll bring him back. So right now what I'm doing is, I'm pretty sure what I will we'll be doing in the nearest future here, is I'll be painting, you know, the details I want to see on the painting by just, you know, evaluating whether I like these spots or not, here or there, whatever. And I will never be zooming in. So it doesn't matter if it doesn't really, you know, look so good, if I would look closer, if it wouldn't like perfectly be a consistent surface or anything. So I really try to not care about that. I remember a long time ago I was making one video, it was from the period where I was constantly repeating that it's really cool to avoid silhouettes in a painting, and I think this is a good thought process for this picture as well, like to improve it. And the way to really, you know, achieve it at first, to really start thinking the right way, is to like make your vision fuzzy, you know, make th your display out of focus and keep painting that way, you know, by having everything fuzzy, as much as you can, it's not actually that easy to do. <laughs> but like, uh, from time to time, just make it fuzzy, especially when you feel stuck, and just evaluate general spots. So you won't be distracted by the quality of the details on the picture, you will be just evaluating shapes, colors, and the details, they come later, they're like, smaller parts of those shapes, but if you don't put the shapes in place the right way, then no matter what the details will be, it will never work. So yeah, I really felt like this branch right here, it really, like, it's like a submarine pipe or something, I don't know. Like, it needs something uh, to make it a bit more alive like this, so I'm trying to do that. Now, with the leaves, I'll go ahead and do this. I'm grabbing, like, some kind of um, average color of a little spot, and then just make a big blob that would be soft color like this on top of it. So what I'm doing is I'm sort of simplifying the mass of leaves, turning them from a bunch of separate individual leaves into 
my interpretation like, look, this is a mass of leaves. And that would be my neighbors. Like, maybe not the perfect example, but here's a piece, I don't know by whom, I'm sorry, but uh, I saved it from Twitter, I think. And in here we can see how there's just no leaves in here. <laughs> there's a certain texture applied to everything, but the eye can really easily see how it's separate from the actual brushwork. And the brushwork is just like, here's a mass, here's a mass, here's a mass. You don't have to and really shouldn't paint individual leaves. It's just not the way things work. And even if you like something more complex, like in this case, we have a piece that's using like some kind of textured brushes that like have these shapes of leaves maybe. But really, I, I really think it's more like it's painted in a separate layer with a sharp brush and then the transparency is locked and then they added just, you see, like, soft gradients inside of the silhouette. It's all over the place, like, this is a perfect place to see that. Right here we can see this is like a sharp cutout shape of leaves, and inside of it there's all kinds of stuff. Granted, this is not the best part of this picture, maybe the most raw part of it, but it exposes the method of this artist. And yeah, you can see how it's actually going on everywhere. You can see sharp silhouette of the whole mass. It's like a single layer thing. And then inside of it, there was like locked transparency and they added all kinds of stuff with like more of a mushy brushes. Really cool approach. I really liked it recently. And anyway, who cares? AI will do that for us soon. <laughs> But yeah, I'll, I'll just go ahead and simplify things this way. Uh, I'm gonna go with, like, not going with sharp silhouettes, which is something you could have done, actually, using your sharp brush, like right here, but not constantly choosing different colors and trying to make a final product out of just these sharp brushes, but instead, you know, using a separate layer and make sharp silhouettes like this. Like, let's say this is your leaf brush. You can choose all kinds of those. Then I lock transparency, and then I'll be using my mushy brush, and I'll be just... You see? You see how this is, this is a thing? And maybe sometimes, to confuse the viewer, we could add some of the sharp brush details inside of this as well. Especially, like, catching some light, you know? Oh, look at that. <laughs> Kinda looks like a mess, actually a better work than I was doing here. Maybe it will give us a better result faster. But yeah, you can see, even though I'm using this sharp brush, it's still like a painterly brush that has certain, you know, bristles in it and certain canvas texture going on, although it's a different canvas texture from my first brush. But nonetheless, you know, it will work together because it doesn't have this perfectly sharp vector looking artificial silhouette. Even though that artist that I just showed, his artwork actually has super sharp silhouettes. He makes it work, but that's just because the whole picture is covered with those sharp silhouettes. So that makes sense. But in here, I feel like, you know, things should be a bit more romantic, as I said. I'll get rid of all these light rays because I really need to introduce them separately. And also not using like overlay or hard light or whatever the mode was in here, probably overlay or something. You should really use screen if you're adding kind of like god rays, any kind of foggy effects. Because this really didn't look right. It's like a weird feeling where the contrast remains, where the fog should actually remove the contrast.
I'll transform that uh, remaining god ray over there into kind of like a beautiful golden glow behind these branches of this main tree, you know, highlighting its silhouette like this and showing some depth in there, like some of the god rays in the back, they're just transforming the whole thing like this and so it will look much more awesome. Also, this uh, color of the sky in here, since everything is so bright, I mean, it's not necessary, let's give it a try. I would maybe try to make the sky really, really bright like this. Not completely losing the blue color, but definitely pushing it to the maximum. Oh yeah, it looks more like daytime, you know, comparing to this, kind of. Yeah, I mean, it was still day, but I feel like this is a bit more giving you the feeling that it's actually happening, I don't know. So yeah, you see, I'm just transforming everything into this dance of brushes, not really caring how exactly things go, but one thing to keep in mind, you need to train your personal abstraction dance with a brush. So what I'm trying to say is I'll be grabbing, like I would wanna transform, I don't know, this part right here, although it's already transformed. Like I would be like, what kind of X shape thing and when I would be grabbing another color, like when you just try to randomize things and create like a certain mass, like these shapes, how exactly I'm doing it to place things in an interesting way to show just a mass of things. That's really important to paint landscapes. They actually, there's like an expression amongst artists, I guess, is that uh, landscape paintings are actually the hardest paintings out there. Usually really awesome artists become landscape artists at the end of their careers, when they're like super experienced and awesome, when they can actually handle it. Um, kind of, like, it's not everybody at all, but it generally, like, it, it's hard because you really need to understand how to interpret natural mess into something that would be like, I want this picture right now because I've seen a lot of nature, but I just love this interpretation. It's a hard puzzle to solve. And it involves a lot of this understanding of color, contrast, how to turn, you know, infinite contrast of reality into the contrast of just, you know, colors on the canvas and all kinds of stuff. So you really like do understand that this is supposed to be hard. It's not a simple task to paint trees and stuff <laughs> to really make it like awesome. Okay, I think we're gonna have to move on from here, but I hope I give you enough food for thought. Yeah, starting with like a tree trunk, you see I sort of made this uh, my favorite lighting of, you know, lightness, darkness, and then another light from another side, the lighting sandwich. Then we worked on the leaves a little bit, trying this uh, trick of, you know, creating sharp silhouettes of all kinds of leaves, then locking the transparency and then doing uh, something like that. And this whole look is just such a quick way to achieve a certain awesome stylized realism. And yeah, overall in the background, I added a bunch of these really uh, expressive abstractions going on, you know, just combining all of those leaves. Like, trust me, those leaves in the back being so sharp like this, taking away from the focus on the main stuff, this is really not bringing anything to the picture. You really need to combine that into something like, what did it look like to this, uh, to this guy right here? It looked like this beautiful golden shine. 
show it, you know, group it together to show that this is one solid meaning. And yeah, all the objects, I just group them all kinds of ways, not trying to keep their silhouettes perfectly sharp, even if you can focus on them and you have like good vision, that's not the point. I also have good vision, but yeah, you gotta group stuff to send the message. Everything needs to have a message in just the way it's shown. And on the guy, I added a little bit of uh, lighting. You see some contact shadows on the ground. And interesting point in here with the shadow from the arm onto the knee. Uh, something to think about. And yeah, uh, the shading of the skin. The light is coming from that side, and we could see that a little bit on the cheek. I decided why not just, you know, it's all skin, it's all that color, so I just made it really lit from that side, creating, you know, these shapes of anime style kind of parts. And that's the way they are in reality too, so that totally works. The point is, it's all skin, so lit by the sun from that side, it will all be like this color. So just go ahead and shade it, it's easy, like that side, sunlit skin, that's all you gotta think about, you know, it's not, it's not risky or anything. Oh, that, that, that Adam's apple is getting out of hand. And yeah, um, last but not least, shape design of the tree branches. We're getting rid of these weird, very broken shapes and making them a bit more like they're alive. I just fixed the two most weirdest ones. <laughs> and yeah, that's about it. Next patient. Nadia. <laughs> Oh wow, Jay. Hi Jay. I don't even know what to do here. This is just an awesome, morally questionable anime picture. Hello Boro. I hope you're doing well. This is my latest character illustration inspired by Alice in Wonderland. She's playfully lifting her skirt. I tried to shade with a general light source in mind, but it lacks three-dimensionality. I tend to struggle a lot with rendering, so I was hoping for your insight. Oh, that's actually cool. Boop. <laughs> uh, we can, uh, yeah, give it a try at maybe somehow improving the lighting. Although, honestly, in the anime context, it's just about enough of, you know, lighting. Yeah, what's interesting, I can see it's not really about lighting, but more like about materials. For instance, like hair. It's kind of uh, odd in terms of the shininess, right? So this is like pretty shiny. Well, this is kind of very matte. So I'll try to like maybe even then out a little bit. Another thing is the white part of the dress. I have a problem again with kind of like the roughness. It's supposed to be like white, very matte and fluffy cotton kind of look. And for that, like this kind of contrast, this looks like a um, ceramics highlight. So we really need to flatten it out in here. Not make it flat, but make it more flat. And of course, the, the more we're facing the light source here, the brighter I will get. Sometimes you're oddly inconsistent with that. Like, I'm not sure why this part is not as bright as this, or even it should be brighter. So I can see a certain like shadow falling from the head. I like continue it like this in here as well. And yeah, speaking of the blue part of the dress, I feel like it could use a bit more just shading. Like if anything, if we're not 100% certain on how the light would react, I would uh, bring it down to just simplified gradients. And surprisingly, I would make them like mostly from the bottom because they're like 
implying certain reflected light. From the dress or from the floor, doesn't matter. It's just gonna look kind of more romantic and awesome. So in here as well, I'll just do exactly that. When there's sunlight, it's coming from the direction of the sun. But when there is no sunlight, we can, you know, come up with where that bouncing light is coming from, the darker one. Now, one thing about the face shading, I would pro I, like, I really want to introduce one shade brighter point for the skin, like something like this, exactly at these brightest spots. Also, hair shouldn't really cast a shadow like this exactly where it's growing, because it's like all comped backwards. There's, there's no distance like that, other except for if this is like a wig. So yeah, just bright skin, exactly just, uh, you know, blending into the color of the actual hair. Uh, right here, again, the direction of the shadow, you know, color sh shouldn't be casting a shadow here because the light is coming from, from here, like it will easily enter all of this, no problem. Since we have a shadow like this from the top, it sh there shouldn't be another shadow in here from the bottom. And on the knees, I would actually like cast the shadow a little bit like this. Like so the sunlight wouldn't start right here. It's kind of weird, like her dress is not casting a shadow. Yeah, the reflection of the light from the blue dress, maybe like this color a little bit, but not even really too much of that because blue is like the darkest color, contrary to whatever movies say. Such blue reflection from this is just looking a bit off because really it's almost not taking into the consideration the color of the skin itself, which is like the opposite color of blue. And so, it's kind of gonna be more like this, but thing is, because it's opposite, it will almost not react at all to the blue reflected light. Like, think about being in a club, standing in blue light and wearing a red shirt. Red shirt would look black in blue color, because that's the opposite colors. They don't light up each other. So strange today, like, um, I'm seeing a certain bright shading on this part of the arm. But why is it not continuing here? Just keep going. It's all facing the sun. Like, sure, there will be ever so slightly noticeable variations in value because angles constantly change on surfaces, especially natural shapes. But it's all like overexposed sunlit brightness. It's, it's all gonna be just super bright, it doesn't matter. Okay, yeah, so fixing some values, some geometry, like, I don't know why this thumb was completely going inwards. Uh, it felt like, you know, sunlight, I think it should really catch some of that. <laughs> and yeah, overall, I feel like the best improvement here is, uh, like, the white part of the dress and generally some 
some distribution of shadows, the way we choose to cast some shadows, and like not just drop them, they, they should like keep going, or maybe other shadows would take their place, make them even stronger. And yeah, in some areas you like forgot to light it up with the sunlight, this is like pretty much the same plane, it wouldn't suddenly like this is the dark side of the girl, no. <laughs> Uh, same as in here, you know, this, yeah, like sure, but the light is kind of from the top, so it would still be lit. Uh, some cast shadows in here, you know, in here, like continuing it a little bit, and in here as well, you can see how in the original cast shadow just stopped because suddenly wrinkles started, so no cast shadow anymore. And in here, I just added some cast shadow from, from the body onto the dress and the arm. And yeah, I really feel like having the top part of the knees here in the shadow really gives a better feeling of this being like the dress on top of the knees, like covering the knees. And this was weird, like a game's graphics where there's no shadow from the dress. So yeah, little things. Good stuff. Next patient is Muhib Zaman. I hope that was even remotely close to correct. Hi, Zaman. Hello, Borodante. I have been watching your videos for like over six years. You were my very first digital art teacher and I learned a lot from you. Almost everything I know. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you. I had stopped painting for a little bit in that time though, but I'm starting to get back at it. This time I have my own money to spend, so here I am, yay! This is a piece that was made somewhat quickly, I can't bring myself to work on big pieces and end up creating concept pieces like this from rough sketches. However, my final piece never turns out quite like the original sketch. In this piece I struggled with trying to maintain a cohesive style and brushwork, as well as hair. Oh yeah, now as I'm paying attention, there are certain things that got lost in translation from the sketch to the painting. Interesting. I like this hair though, this is so cool. It looks like it's made of chrome or something. I love painting hair, but it's always a challenge for me. The colors are also a bit weird, especially on the neck and eyes. Thanks in advance. Boop. Alright, so I definitely can't wait to, you know, shade the skin according to the direction of the lighting and stuff, so that'll be awesome. But first, I really want to analyze a little bit what we're missing from the sketch and maybe why. I think mostly it's because you have a certain lack of tools to express shapes using brightness, which is values. So we obviously have like the lighting from the top, so let's go ahead and go with that. So redness of the nose, it's always a big conflict with like internet culture character art. Uh, it's like the nose really wants to be darker in this uh, approach, but it's sticking forward, so it should be catching certain light as well. So even though it's darker, it needs to also get brighter, you know? So it's like, what do we do? Well, keep it red, but just make it brighter on the plane where it's like facing up. And yeah, I really like, like you have a good shape design in the sketch, Maybe the braid uh, could use a little bit more of a, a live shape, but I think it's kind of more alive in here. Uh, but when it comes to the brushwork of actual shading of the flesh, it looks a bit like you're losing confidence and drop all of this really cool shape design. Thing is, this should happen everywhere. That's how you will prosper. So I'm grabbing like the skin color, going like darker, a bit more saturated, a bit more red, generally having this color, and I'll just fill it up right here in this problematic neck area that you didn't know what to do with or something. And inside of that, I would probably just introduce a little bit of that gradient that would give like this inverse shading. Because, you know, all of this bright surface on the shoulder will be reflecting the light in here. 
And since this is facing the light like over here to the shoulder more than this part, this one is like, oh, I'm somewhere facing horizontal. That's why this will be getting a bit brighter, just like this. It's subtle, it shouldn't be strong. What's strong is the difference from the direct light and the, the shadow part. There's like two separate worlds, right? What's in the main light and what's not in the main light. But what's not in the main light can also have a bunch of those extra lights bouncing around. That's where we can choose interesting things to happen. But yeah, you can pretty much start with splitting the whole picture into two parts. In the main light or not in the main light. And yeah, I'm not sure how much of this redness and like burnt skin going on on this character or was it just your way to approach it and detail it somehow? I'm not 100% because the character looks a bit brutal, that's for sure, kind of, not sure. <laughs> like really, in the sketch, nothing really implies that, you know? And in here we have this like, it almost looks like a... a a burn from a fire like very well also also this but again that wasn't in the sketch so there's definitely sort of certain mutilation going on on the character so i'm not sure how much i should you know shade the skin like normal skin but i'll at least start with that because adding defects on top is uh, an easy task if you have a solid base I want to just increase that dynamic range a little bit. I, I just feel like doing this today. It just looks so nice. And so we, we have to do that here as well. So the highlight will have to be reworked. And yeah, this way I'm solving, not solving the issue. Like I could either darken down the rest of the face or I can brighten up the parts that are facing upwards. That's what I was talking about, like this work with values where we need to define what's facing up, what's facing left, right, and bottom, and forward too. <laughs> all of them, all the directions, except for backwards, we can't see those. So you see, in the sketch, you're really implying this good, like, plasticity of the shape. I can see this top plane going on in here. It's really in there, you know? You can kind of see how this is supposed to be brighter than whatever is not this. <laughs> and you know, this and this uh, a little bit in here, the nose, like the top plane of the nose. So all of this together. These are the things that are like definitely gonna catch more light. Uh, same as like, probably top eyelids, they're pretty big here. So yeah, we have like two versions of the skin color here, this redder kind of color, and like normal non-redder color of the skin. So go ahead and do like repeat these shapes here and make sure, you know, you have confident lines like you have on the hair. I'm doing generally a softer work here because I'm a softer person than you are. A little shadow from the hair, just like that. Looking super realistic.
and um, I don't know, some scars. We can bring those back. But generally, I think we uh, achieved our goal of, you know, having this dynamic shape in the face, in the shading, in the neck. You know, it has nice shape design. Although I made it like clean and, I know, nice. It's just because I felt like doing it like that. I think we managed to save the legacy of your sketch. Next patient is Tati. Welcome back, Tati. Hi, Baro. This is an old painting of mine, one year ago, that I want to repaint. I was wondering if you could take a look at the lighting for me. Maybe do a different type of lighting? Just looking for ideas here. Feel free to entirely scratch the face and do something else. It's called Found You and is meant to induce a sense of unease. Nice. It was a painting for my brother who plays a lot of Subnautica. Ooh, cool. So lighting, you say? Yeah, I really like the setup for the lighting. So we have like the light from the back. It's a big soft light of like the ocean's surface. And the face is, uh, well, not facing it. It's facing us and we're at the bottom at the dark. And also to break down this darkness a little bit and introduce some extra details we have these glowing flowers at the bottom which is a really cool thing and i'm gonna go ahead and try to take advantage of this setup i think we can really relight things a little bit since that's the main objective so yeah what, what i'm gonna do right now is i'm gonna get rid of all the details <laughs> all the details from the front plane because I'm literally seeing how this is the point of the setup, that we're at the bottom of the ocean, this leviathan or whatever, uh, he's on top of us, so we're in the darkness of the ocean and he's looking at us like this. So the top plane of the face needs to be in the darkness. And, you know, the top plane of all his body everywhere as well. Like, obviously there's gonna be this water perspective going on that would introduce like this fading with the distance but nonetheless so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and do this remove all the details uh, add this darkness because i need it to then maybe add some light from the glowing flowers that's how we're gonna roll you know in order to introduce a second light source you first need to get rid of the first one because you can't paint brighter on top of already bright and then trying to shade it down first you remove one into the you know physically appropriate darkness as if there's no second light and then you add it back in or add it at all in this case And don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna make like a huge Las Vegas glowing from these little glowing flowers here. No, just a little bit to introduce some details that I removed. They were like, these details were originally really dark. I feel like they can be introduced back, but from the light that's coming more like from the front and it will be a little bit warm and it will look really cool, I think.
just wanted to add something really close and out of focus kind of you know so there would be um, more depth than just one plane of flowers you know and that's it. something much closer also going on for instance i don't know now i almost feel like choosing color and getting rid of even more of these green colors of the of the leaves everywhere because they just don't really make sense such a bright saturated green color would only happen in the white lighting but we're in the environment when there's this very blue color everywhere like obviously there's uh, these little glowing things but right now i want to introduce just the light from the ocean that's why i'm removing it that separation needs to be clean you know this light from the back will be all blue and the light from the front or from like the center of all these flowers it will be warm and the viewer's eye will appreciate that it'll say thank you thank you for the good separation of the light sources so yeah all of that now gone and now next stage i'll bring it back <laughs> But now I'll grab like, maybe it will be like really just kind of green. It will be dark though. And like this, you see, I'm paying a big attention to the direction of the light that would be coming from these golden little balls. Now that feels like something. So our Leviathan is kind of blue as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make him like the cyan. So he will reveal his own color that'll be different from the color of the ambience of the ocean. A little bit like warmer, but generally it's all a lot darker than the way we shaded this flower right here. And, you know, maybe a little highlight would be exposing the texture on the surface of Leviathan. Whatever it would be, it could be something cool with, like, patterns or whatever. Like, specifically breaking just the highlights with that pattern, maybe. Maybe not. I'll keep it this way. Because I don't know things. I never met a Leviathan. I never played Subnautica myself. I only watched Markiplier doing that. Now, the most fun part. So, yeah, this flower, uh, pretty much all of them should have that, but let's do the face real quick. So, I'm gonna start with shading, you know, the overall cylinder that we have here. And a little bit from the right, because this flower is the closest one. And then we have a mouth, we have this strong cheekbone action, some nose geometry is interesting, we'll see. There we go. Now we can see how this is really bringing the atmosphere of, you know, that ocean is way over there and it's blue and this super dim warm light is right here between you and this guy. And that's looking cool. So yeah, there we go. Now, overall, we can add like more subtle, precise details of lighting from these uh, bowls onto all the leaves, you know, because 
more or less maybe a little bit all of the leaves should be kind of lit with very dim color just to justify this light actually reaching leviathan but that's totally not necessary i think as is it's already looking cool what also I like doing a lot uh, in the situation of, you know, the monster with glowing eyes is uh, glowing his own face a little bit from the eyes. That's always looking kind of dope. Yeah, some just fake detail like this to make him look more metal. Nice. Next patient is Rola Den Koenig, aka Max. Hi Max, hello there. Today's patient, Angst, fear in German. Yeah, that's right. It's good to be back as always, this time with my first musical inspired picture. As you might see, it's an artwork on one of Rammstein's new songs, Angst. I got my inspiration mainly from the video and their live performances. The main focus on this piece was dramatic lighting. I experimented a lot with rim lights in this one. I think it's very solid, but the character in the middle falls apart when looking at the picture's whole composition. Any insight on rim light would be very much appreciated. Best regards, Max. Boop. This guy is looking awesome. I like his just shape. So let's see about the rim lighting. One thing about it is that, as I always say, rim lighting is mostly reflections. And because of that, it, it exposes a lot of like tiny details, tiny textures on objects. So you gotta pay careful attention to, you know, how just the wrinkles react to everything, whatever the clothing would be. It would probably be showing all of that cool stuff exactly there. Angst. It's not the music video where they had like plastic surgeries on them. I think it was the other one. And yeah, like it, we're exposing here a certain amount of like anatomical details. And I'm not sure what exact outfits they wear in this live or music video version of this. But I would assume this kind of details would show up. And hair is like crazy about rim lighting. It just starts to glow like this. If you don't do this, it just doesn't look like hair. It's like the most glowing, crazy rim light area always. Because translucency and a whole lot of surface, all of it picks up everything from the rim light. You shouldn't be afraid of adding some details, maybe even disconnected from the actual silhouette that would be catching a little bit of that rim light. If they stick out enough to see over the horizon of their host, <laughs> they will catch that light. Especially considering like there's so much angles to reach the center, you know? We can really go quite crazy there. But that's of course if we want that. We can of course focus on just being dramatic and uh, increasing that contrast and just keeping things really like almost black and white. I'm gonna make his head a bit smaller. Is this teal by the way? He's in the center so I'm gonna assume it is him. I know why he's holding the drumsticks. <laughs> Maybe I don't know something about teal. I really like how they have like the secondary lighting that's slightly showing their shapes. Very nice touch, like nice how there are separate colors and everything and how you didn't really get too much into details. It almost looks like video encoding artifacts a little bit on it, you know, it looks really cool in that regard. We can add a little bit of that in here as well. One thing I also like doing 
Hmm, I'm, I'm gonna have to somehow select and separate them from the background. But yeah, a certain glow behind them. I'm gonna add that in a moment. All right, now I'm gonna grab this uh, some kind of cloud brush. I had that, there it is. And yeah, introducing a little bit of like lit up smoke or whatever it's called, stage mist right behind their bodies. It first of all looks dope. And secondly, it's actually physically appropriate because their backs are lit very brightly with the light source so right next to their surfaces there will be more brightness going on kinda i'm not sure on that theory <laughs> it might not make too much sense but in a painting why not so yeah a little bit of that and all together this kind of changes you know a bit more definition specifically you know when you work with the rim light like all the details that are parallel to the silhouette more or less they'll be catching a lot of definition so make sure to define those sharply because like that's all you have to do you know there's so little work needed to be done when you're working with uh, rim lighting cool picture cool album too next patient and final patient actually is kexwis kexwa i don't know hi there Hey yo, Boro, I've been watching your videos for a long ass time, but I haven't actually started digital painting up until recently. I usually draw using flat line art and flat coloring, but I wanted to start getting out of my comfort zone and shift my way into painting instead. Your tips and videos helped a lot. This is my second piece so far. He's some sort of a weird, smoky, ethereal guy. It's a bit messy and rough in some areas, and I'm not so sure how to make it look better. Making close looking convincing has always been a challenge for me. I'm really excited to hear what you think. Like, really excited. Hope all is well, and thank you. Oop. All right, now let's see. Honestly, looking pretty dope as like just a base for a pretty cool concept art. I'm saying a base because uh, I, I feel like it could use a bit more definition, something more specific and interesting. But overall, I would work a little bit on the dynamics of his shape and maybe I would fix some anatomy. I opened a few references here at the bottom on my second screen and I'll just go ahead and change some details the way I see fit. Also, I can see you have some uh, like photo elements of like smoke. And what's interesting about this smoke, it has this effect of sort of being hollow in the center and being more solid when it's folding or showing at the edges, you know, this kind of stuff. And I think we should like repeat it somewhere on his arms. Maybe he's uh, having that going on, like he's turning into the same kind of nature. Oh, it's kind of cool that we can actually see the handle of his sword in his hand. And yeah, I'm using this decorative line that you had like strip behind the character to actually show that he's not just gray in the middle, he's actually transparent like this. Mm, 
nice and maybe add a little bit of the chaos not just the perfectly just like a glass guy but actually add a little bit of that like you had a little bit in here but we can add it not just on the silhouettes but on him Maybe tone down this like highlight aerial perspective of the sword a little bit like it's all correct and all but I feel like it would just benefit from being a bit a bit more subtle. Also, I did this a little bit of inverse shading on the sword, uh, on the blade. So it was kind of like lit up from the bottom, which was like fighting against the silhouette of the blade. And that's why you lit it up in here. Although again, it sort of blended with this lit up thing. And this way I just made a stronger black silhouette and we don't have to light it up as much in there. So yeah, uh, a bit of a improved anatomy using some references, a cool play with the smoky material on the arms and the legs, which is always fun to transform arms and legs. And I guess that'll be pretty much it. That's all you gotta do. <laughs> I know how that thing goes. And it's not like it's a Japanese sword anyway. But let's say it's a crazy world. So yeah, here we go. Always fun to work on like a concept character of someone cool, you know? <laughs> so yeah, that'll be it for this submission as well as the other five, which were a lot of fun to work on. So yeah, that'll be it. Thank you guys for watching. If any of you want me to overpaint your picture like this, the link to my Patreon page is in the end of this video, but do keep in mind, now it's $75 per submission, and I limited it to three people per month. And I'm expecting and almost hoping to not even reach that number. This month, I have one submission to work on, and during September, up to three people can submit for the next month. And that'll be about it. This will be a new format of overpaying where I just spend a good amount of time on each piece, making sure it's polished and kind of finalized as much as I can within one episode. But that will be the format. 
mostly because I want to focus on developing my game now. I'm just spending every day right now playing Unreal Engine, trying to make all kinds of stuff happen in there. It's really fun to me. But this was definitely a lot of fun to work on as well. Like these six submissions really felt refreshing to, you know, uh, get back to this favorite work of mine, you know, was a lot of fun. So yeah, if any of you guys want to take part in this in the next month, make sure to visit my Patreon page. But for now, this is it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Oh man, she was so brutal. And now she's just like, what kind of lotion do you use? These are so nice. Can't say the same about this guy.